Battlefield 5. A game I've uh, not played. Battlefield. I've never played it. I have friends who have played Battlefield, and I know very little about it, but I want to talk about some of these cultural issues in today's final video. Apparently, there is a, there's a hubbub over Battlefield having, like, a female character with a prosthetic arm and weird, you know, hair and makeup, and people said that Battlefield had become Fortnite. You know, Fortnite is a fun game. I've also never played it. It's not, I'm not, I, I play Destiny sometimes, but now I mostly play Hearthstone. But uh, Battlefield is supposed, many people want it to feel real. Like, uh, like it actually exists in a universe uh, somewhat related to ours. So if it's World War II, they want it to feel like World War II. And in the trailer, when you see a, a frontline female infantry, people were like, oh, I don't believe that's the case. I'm pretty sure there were female uh, on the front lines to an extent, but a lot of people got mad about it. I'm not a historian, don't ask me. But there was a lot of concern that she had a prosthetic arm and that she had all this crazy makeup on. And they were making Battlefield, which they wanted to be nitty gritty, like in the dirt, more like Fortnite with flashy colors and fancy weapons that didn't exist. There was a debate. Some people said, it's a video game. Of course it's not real. You know, to an extent, I think video games should allow you to design whatever character you want. It doesn't need to be absolutely realistic. And a lot of people pointed that out, that, dude, you're playing a fantasy game. It's not real, you know? It's a video game meant to be surreal, meant to be fun, and meant to be otherworldly. But a lot of people said, right, but the point of Battlefield is to experience, you know, something as close as possible as this, like, a war simulator, and they're turning it into a fantasy, fun time kind of game. So something interesting happened. We saw this article. It says, EA, don't like women in Battlefield 5? Don't buy it. And that was, that, was, that was the message back in June, where they were like, look, if you're going to complain about the way we designed the game, then just don't buy it, okay? And that was them betting, making a bet, that more people would play the game than actually cared about this. I, I firmly believe that there are a lot of consultants telling people, look, it's a vocal minority, it's a small group of people that are saying these things, ignore them. And I made a video about what's called uh, the 1% rule, that... Uh, I can't remember exactly what it is, but I effectively, uh, I was basically saying, you know, back when Ellen Pau was calling the Reddit users complaining of vocal minority, I said, right, but these are the most active users. They might be the vocal minority, but they are the ones who lead the charge. The people paying attention to your game who are complaining about it are the ones who make YouTube videos about it. They're the ones who tweet about it, who Instagram about it. They're the ones who tell their friends about it. Everyone else just sort of buys what they feel like buying. And if you lose influencers, you lose sales. So that's what they said. So let's the story. EA's chief design officer, Patrick Soderlin, says Battlefield 5 is the game DICE wanted to make full stop. Have you heard? Battlefield 5 has women folk in it. Now, instead of talking about gameplay, we need to talk, have conversations about troop compositions and historical accuracy in games. I want to stop here and just mention, there is an update to this that is really funny. You've probably got it from the title already. But let's read through this so that there's a good, a good suspense that builds up when you realize just how... It didn't work out, and it didn't. Unless you're an e unless you're EA Chief Design Officer Patrick Sunderland, Sutherland, who is far more direct. In short, Battlefield Five is the game Dice wanted to make. If you don't like the creative decisions they went that went to the game, you don't have to buy it. And that's true. Free market. You don't like the game, don't pay for it. That's what they're saying, right? This is something that the development team pushed. Sutherland told Gamma Sutra. Battlefield Five is a lot about the unseen, the untold, the unplayed. The common perception is that there were no women in World War II. There were a ton of women who fought, who both fought in World War II and partook in the war. After explaining the creative reasoning, Soderlund moved to, into personal examples. I have a 13-year-old daughter that when the trailer came out, she saw all the, all the flack and she asked me, Dad, why is this happening? He continued. She plays Fortnite and says, I can be a girl in Fortnite. Why are people so upset about this? I just said, you know what? You're right. This is not okay. These are people who are uneducated. They don't understand that this is a plausible scenario. It's fine if it's a plausible scenario, but this was part of the criticism. That in war, people are covered in filth and dirt and running through a grimy battlefield. And this is a person who's talking about how his 13-year-old daughter can be a, a girl in Fortnite. But in Fortnite, you can be like, you can wear a pink bunny suit and ride on missiles. It's far from like a battlefield simulator. So... I think I understand why people were upset about it. Personally, I'm, I'm more of the, like, look, I'm not much of a laissez-faire kind of person, but I do believe in market capitalism. And so when this happened, I was like, I don't care. That's cool that they had those characters in it. I'm just not going to play it. I didn't complain. I didn't, you know, like, go to my friends and be like, can you believe they did this with the purple hair? I was like, I don't play Fortnite either, you know? If EA wants to make this game... I 
So apparently the Battlefield fans were upset. That's a kind of a deviation. And were complaining. And the studio said, they said, you know what? That is not okay. These are people who are uneducated. Well, don't look, man. Why are you ragging on your fans? There is a way to talk to your fans and be nice and not tell them they're uneducated. You can just be like, what, what's, what's so wrong with going to the fan base and be like, hey guys, we hear you out. You know, we didn't, we didn't mean this as a slight against anybody. I'm sorry that you guys feel upset uh, that you don't like the direction we took. It, it's the game that we made. I hope you're willing to give it a chance. And even if it isn't something you really wanted to play, I, I hope that you know that we put our heart and souls into this to make something fun for everybody. And if it's not something you, you, you're, you're into, then I understand. But I just ask you, please give it a chance. How hard, how, would that be hard? Could they do that? Apparently not. And apparently they didn't, okay? Because it gets better. Listen, this is a game, and today's gaming is gender diverse. Like it hasn't been before, there are a lot of female people who want to play and male players who want to play as a badass woman. And we don't take any flack. We stand up for the cause because I think those people who don't understand it, well, you have two choices. Either accept it or don't buy the game. I'm fine with either. It's just not okay. So that was uh, Peter, I believe that was Patrick Soderlund. Was that a quote from him? Yes, that was a quote from Patrick Soderlund. What do you think happened? EA exec departure comes ahead of big EA game launch. This from Sarah E. Needleman. Electronics Arts chief design officer is leaving just two months before the launch of a new installment of one of the biggest franchises, Battlefield. Patrick Soderlund has been with EA for nearly 20 years and worked out of its DICE studio in Stockholm. That makes the war-themed video game, that makes the war-themed video game series. Earlier this month, Cohen said pre-order sales of Battlefield 5 have been weak. It is due for release in between Activision Blizzard's next Call of Duty game and Take-Two Interactive Software's Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption sequel, both of which Cohen says are showing greater pre-order demand. Cohen says Battlefield could suffer the fame fate as Titanfall 2, which was released in between two major game launches in 2016 and sold poorly, except Battlefield is a major game. It is not coming in between two major games so much as it is the second of three major games, okay? So that I don't believe that's a good excuse. Now, I don't know why Soderlund left, but what we can see here is that pre-order sales have been weak. And let me just give you my opinion. I don't know why they've been weak. Maybe people just don't want the game, but when you tell people, if you don't like it, don't buy it, what do they say? They say, okay, and they don't buy it. I'm not gonna buy it. I don't like it. I don't care. I think the game's fine if people want to play it. I have no problem with them making a game that's gender inclusive with purple hair and face paint. That's fine. Fine by me. Make the game. You know, find people who enjoy it. And if there are people who like the social justice aspect of it, hey, more power to you. You know, you got a game that's really awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm not going to play it. And it's not because I don't like the game. It's not because uh, I hate anybody or it's political. It's simply I watched the trailer and I just didn't care. That's really it. I think too, too much of what happens in the culture war are the vocal minorities. You have the vocal minority anti-social justice and the vocal minority social justice. And the vocal minority anti-social justice is complaining about, you know, oh, all this stuff about what's going on and we don't like it. But they're vocal about what they don't like and they don't like specific things. But the reality is there is a silent majority, large groups on both sides who don't say anything. I tend to fall into that category, though I am very loud on my YouTube channels. And I will just say, I watched the trailer and kind of just clicked on. It didn't mean anything to me. You know, it wasn't a couple days later until I started seeing all this backlash or people complaining about it. And I was like, well, okay, I don't care. I'm just not going to buy your game. I'm not going to complain to you to make you change the game. It's your game. You know, I, I have a saying, I'm not going to get mad at someone for not doing me a favor. If you make a cherry pie and I hate cherry, I'm not going to be like, this is bullshit. Why, why are you making cherry make apple? I'm going to be like, that's fine. I won't have any. And then when you get mad because I'm buying your pie, I'm like, well, dude, if you made apple, I'd have bought it. It's that simple. I got no beef with you for making a game I don't like. I'm just not going to give you any money. And, you know, I don't know if it really is because the game came out in between two other games or, or what the issue is, but the guy who designed it is leaving the company and pre-order sales have been weak. Naturally, there's going to be a lot of people who are making the assumption that this guy led the charge, Patrick Soderlund, and he made the statement about his daughter playing Fortnite. I have to imagine that he's at the company saying, listen, Fortnite's huge and you've got purple hair. Why don't we like, you know, do something like that? Because that's what people like. Not realizing that people like different things. And you might like Fortnite because it's a fun, silly battle royale. And you might like B Battlefield because it's like a war. It's a Battlefield simulator that you're going to play. There's a difference, okay? I, I have uh, Watch Dogs and I play that sometimes. 
And I also have like GTA 5 and I play that sometimes. They're different games, right? GTA does different things. The controls are different. I'm not sitting here complaining, wishing that GTA had hacking abilities. I'm just like, it's a different game, plain and simple. So you can like Fortnite and you can like Battlefield and not want them to be the same. So you know what? I guess I'll put it that way. I'll, I'll leave it at that. I think what these companies don't realize is that when there is a vocal minority, they might actually represent a larger community. And thus they're faced with a problem. If you have a vocal minority of people on the far left saying that we need diversity, and you have, you have another group saying, no, we want realistic simulation, who do you pick? I think the problem then becomes you're going to lose the market. You can't chase every single person in whatever gaming demographic. Sometimes you have to make a product specifically for a small group of people and hope that they buy it a lot. Volume. Sometimes you can make a really expensive product for a small group of people or a really cheap product or inexpensive product for a very large group of people. Suffice it to say, there are people now who really do believe the guy lost his job because of this and sales are weak because of it. I don't know. All I can add is that I have no interest in playing Battlefield 5. Uh, I, I've like played a couple times, like some of the older games, but I, I, have no, I, don't, I don't care. I'm not going to play it. And I have no personal grudge or beef and I really don't care what the game does. It's really that simple. I saw the trailer and said, I don't care. End of story. Anyway, I'm out. I got to do a bunch more work and I will see you all tomorrow on the main channel.